Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Brewers, where we tell the stories behind your favorite beer. Joining me, as always, is Erica and Sound Guy Ryan. Ah, uh, yeah. I had to do the. I had to do it because he always does it to me. This, you know, he's like and Matt. I had to be oh like, yeah, right. Sound Guy Ryan. Mar. Yeah. But yeah, we have an awesome episode for this week. You better believe it. And as we promised in last week's intro, we are at another secret location. Whisper, 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 whisper. whisper. We are actually in an underground bunker from World War II that we've discovered in the woods of northern Vermont. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> um, and you can hear all the, the reverb from the room that Ryan has eliminated because he's such a good sound engineer. Yeah. And we're totally not in one of our attics. Nope. Exactly. Exactly. So, Erica, Sound Guy Ryan, how are you? Oh, you know, we're doing. Ryan is also microphone shy this week, once again. Once and again. he just gave us the good old 10 4 good buddy with a thumbs, thumbs up. Thumbs up. Yeah, he's doing great. Right, Ryan? Chilling like a villain. Another thumbs up from Ryan. <laughs> so, who do we have this week? We have Christy from Alaskan Brewing Company. She's their head brewer there and a total badass. And a pastor. And a pastor. <laughs> yeah. But you would have known that if you listened to our outro last week. You would have known. Yeah. Uh, I'm very excited for this one because, like we said in the outro, ta -da -da. Um, who would have thought that we would have gone to Alaska before we got to right? Rhode Island or Connecticut? Yeah. Uh, Don't worry. Shame on us. Don't worry. We have a, we have a trip planned. <laughs> They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. I promise. Yeah. Um, no, but this is super exciting. Uh, it's just interesting to hear uh, some of the similarities that we heard with, you know, like Maui Brewing Company with some yeah. logistics planning and a totally different, you know, scenario. Right. It's the same in this, like, just getting there is such a hassle. Yes. You'd think it wouldn't be as bad because... Well, they're connected to the continent. That's right. But like the roads and getting there is just a real pain. It's also interesting to like hear what like certain breweries flagship is mm, yeah. based upon like location. Like I know a couple of weeks ago we interviewed another brewery and they were like, our Amber is <laughs> Am I like, like what? what? Yeah. So <laughs> you'll hear what their flagship is yeah. in this episode. We don't want to spoil it. But I mean, it's just interesting to hear like. It's how not many, an IPA. Yeah, how many breweries around here are like, oh, IPA is our flagship. It's like, yeah, no shit. Everyone yeah. else is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this week I have actually been recovering from, I had a Friends Olympic. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. So lots Did of. Did you that. win? <laughs> it will be posted on social media i don't want to spoil <laughs> so follow us on all social medias to find out the results of the first annual friends olympics yeah yeah well, can't be annual i think it has to be like by annual. no it will be annual yeah because okay. I, I, I who knows where i'll be in four years okay and like in four years am i gonna want to do it if i didn't do it for another well, you four could years? Do the winter olympics in two years oh yeah like a snowball fight yeah 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 we could ski down your hill we could ski down my hill that'd be awesome <laughs> yeah but it's been awesome watching the olympics speaking of like the real life olympics yeah that was fun it's funny uh oh two weeks ago I, I made this stupid declaration that if you give me 18 months i could do an activity like you know shooting or archery you could do it i could do it at but i don't think i could do it at the olympic <laughs> level know. and then there's sports like gym like gymnastics like yeah. what simone biles does like you give me 18 months i don't even think i could do a cartwheel right right so like <laughs> There's so many active. It's crazy to see how um, it's just it's crazy to see like how amazing the human body a can be. Yeah, some of the the feats that like you know the gym, gymnasts can do, and then the the stamina and the in the attention to detail and the drive and de dedication to people's crafts. Totally. Like you give me 18 months, I can probably do archery, but I will never be able to do it at the level of these Olympians. Oh no, who are the best of the no, best. No, 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 no. Yeah. yeah, and I, I don't even think I could do archery well in eighteen months. I just want that to be you like very shoot clear. the arrow, but it would like hit a car. No, but like <laughs> it is funny. Like I became like a little bit of an aficionado on all the. Ooh. I was like, oh, I love watching this, and now I know the rules. Nice. But like, I hope I don't forget them in four years when it comes <laughs> around again. You just need a refresher course. Just a little bit of a refresher course. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, um, it was funny because we, when I was watching the Olympics, I was watching uh, women swimming and the, one of the athletes is from Alaska. So. Yeah. And she won. And she won. Which gold. is so cool. So it's cool. Just yeah. to kind of tie, tie everything together. Uh, yeah. So, uh, if you want to support us, like you've been supporting our amazing Olympic athletes. Yeah. Follow us on all social medias in our Patreon, <laughs> which is Brew Roots Podcast on Patreon.com. Uh, yeah, and uh, listen to the outro so we can tease our next week's episode. And we're, guess what? We're doing a Massachusetts brewery, so you'll want to... You'll want to tune in. Yeah, so uh, take it away, sound guy, right? Who I swear is to my left. I think. I think. Sound.
So we are live at the wonderful Small Pond Studios in As always. Georgetown, Massachusetts. And I th- believe geographically, this is the furthest interview for us. Would South Africa be farther? We'll have Actually, to look. Actually, we'll, we'll have We're to look. We're going to have to look. Yeah. We got to look. But uh, this episode is really exciting because we had a lot of fun with our Hawaii episode. Yeah, we because did. You know, it's a unique situation where it's really no bordering states. Right. Um, and it's kind of its area. It's, it's way that far out there. Yeah. Um, we're not interviewing another brewery in Hawaii, but we would love to. <laughs> but we would love to do it in person because... Yeah, because why not? Why not? It'd be in Hawaii. Right. <laughs> You'd be silly to say I don't want to be in Hawaii. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't mean I don't want to go to this location any less. Yeah. No, I would agree with that. It's beautiful, beautiful there. Yeah. Yeah. So, Erica... Where are we today? We're in Alaska. What? What? That's, That's crazy. You mean this little old podcast <laughs> in Massachusetts made its way to Alaska? Oh, yeah. So, who are we interviewing today? We're interviewing Christy of Alaskan Brewing Company. Which I'm very excited to talk to her about because I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I've never had your beer. I've definitely heard of it. Yes. Um, I don't know that I've had it. But the people who have told me about it are brewers who actually brew here that once A, lived in Alaska, whether mm-hmm. they were in the military. Yep. Or B, were brewers in other breweries in Alaska. Yeah. So, I know that it's a good brewery. Definitely. So, Christy, how are you today? I am well. Yeah. And Thank you for asking. I have to compliment. You have the best microphone that we've done virtually. So I, we, I think so. Best, best headset ever. Yeah, we have to applaud you. So, thank you for doing that. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that was sound guy, Ryan. So, a little bit of a technology bent keeps me, you know, keeps, keeps you me young. On my toes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I can, I, we appreciate that. So, we start every podcast asking our guests um, their role at the brewery and their first memory of beer. So, take it away, Christy. The first memory of beer may be a tricky one. My goodness. Um, <laughs> my my role at the Alaskan Brewing Company is chief operating officer, um, but I really like to just consider myself a brewer. Um, I've been a, a brewer at Alaskan um, since 1995. Wow. Um, I've, I've had a, a long career and, and left Juno and came back to it with a, a swarm of children um, <laughs> and and a, a lot of ideas on recipes. Um, but I, I think that I just really consider myself a, a brewer first and, and foremost. So my first, I'll tell you my first memory of a craft beer um, that was in the legal realm. So <laughs> I turned 21 um, at Henry's Bar in Kodiak, Alaska and had a Alaskan Amber at midnight. So um, that was a a good memory to to start my um, brewing career that preceded my brewing (laughs) career. So it's a good anchor point. And I would have sent you all some beer had I known that you hadn't tried um, Um, our our beverages. So we'll have to do a follow-up We'll work something up. Yeah. Yeah. I always find it interesting, um, you know, people getting into craft beer, did you get into brewing because of craft beer or did you get into brewing just out of curiosity? That's a good question. Um, thank you for the question. So I have a food science bachelor's degree and I did a co-op with Anheuser-Busch um, in 1991. Um, and I uh, ran high speed canning lines in Houston, Texas and got really interested in just the the fermentation and the science side of that, which was not an op that wasn't offered to me at Texas A&M. They, they had programs um, at Ohio State. They had programs in, in Oregon and, of course, UC Davis that I attended later. But I had an interest from that co-op opportunity when I was in university. So when I traveled through Juneau and this little brewery um, had an open brewing position, I was, I was headed from Kodiak to go back south, and I applied, and I ended up – I ended up staying and, and becoming a, a brewer. That was when the company only had about 14 employees. And which brewery was that? Was that Alaskan or? Alaskan Brewing Company. Wow. Yep. Nice. Nice. So you've been a professional brewer for a number of years. Correct. Just yeah, we don't yeah. have to add them up. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> so you you never really even home brewed. You just kind of went right into to professional brewing? 
I homebrewed after I started professional brewing. I mean, prior to that, I did make mead and some things um, that I wouldn't really consider. <laughs> I wouldn't really consider homebrewing, um, but we had a, a really a group that would brew together. Uh, even though you're brewing professionally, you do a lot of home brewing um, when you're a brewer and you want to try things and try different yeast strains. And that was during a time um, in the 1990s when um, really pale ales and IPAs were just taking off. Um, so we would experiment with different hop varieties and and then Belgians became, you know, the thing. Um, so we, we wanted to try different yeast strains and we would generally do those in our garage setups. Um, at the time. So I've done a, a little bit of both of those things and, and of course, enjoyed judging and, and tasting other, other breweries yeah. um, op- options. So, yeah. So where does, I, I did some research on you. Where does becoming a pastor? <laughs> it, it, Cause I know being a brewer isn't like, you know, a 12 hour a week job. It is, it is quite a commitment to be a brewer. Uh, so how did you make a time to become a pastor? Indeed it is. Um, I think I skirt the edge of overscheduled all the time. Um, but I I know that struggle. I, yes. <laughs> I went to I went to, to seminary and uh, you know, while being in, in this business and then have a have a role as a as a pastor serving in three area churches. Oh, three. Um, but there's there's a lot of just connection with the community and there are a lot of things associated with pastoral care that are relevant in, in a global pandemic and um, in running a small business. So those, um, those roles uh, somewhat, you know, intersect without the theological component. Mm. Um, but it was just a, a tug, you know, that I had and has been an opportunity to open me up to a lot of different um, groups. Um, so my circles have just become, you know, wider as a result of that. And as you all know, the wider the circle and the more diverse, um, the better the beer is. So I, I think that I definitely bring in um, elements of, of that work um, into our innovation and the beers and, and the, the leadership position that I have. Um, and then um, I am, I am relevant probably to, to some of the members of the congregation um, as a result of my role in the private industry. So I'm able to, to navigate both of those in a community that is a, a really cool community to be in. Very cool. That's, that is cool. It's like, this is the first time we've had that, combination before so yeah. that's that's interesting i think you're totally right you are reaching different circles different people but it all kind of connects i think beer very much is about community and you know the people involved and you know so it was religion so yeah absolutely yeah. and i couldn't agree more the you broadening that circle i mean beer is the ultimate conversation driver and people come together for right beer, so it's a it's kind of a, a perfect yeah mesh, they all mesh, kind yeah. of <laughs> mesh together well i think yeah uh, I am curious, um, brewing in the 90s, were you brewing more English style um, beers or what were the, the styles that were prominent in the 90s? I would say when, when we started, um, the, the styles were more malt forward. Um, that was really before, you know, some of the hop craze and then everything, everything went toward Hefeweizen. Yep. So if you remember Hefeweizen's, you know, yeah. being... Um, being all the rage and then, you know, things like Pete's Wicked Ale and, and those things. And then, and then uh, hops really uh, became a force and, and were hop forward. But we've always been a little bit more on the malt forward side with um, smoked porter and the smoked malts and showcasing the uh, alder wood and, and the, the flavors that we have in our space. I, I think um, as a, as a, micro brewer at the time and then a craft brewer and a regional brewer you want to really be be showcasing what's in your backyard Mm -hmm. um, and what's different and unique um, about the place Um, but we definitely can can flex um, the muscle some muscle with hop varieties as well so we've got a a number of of fun products we have a 586 experimental um, double ipa coming out um, soon that's a opportunity to showcase a hop in a really in a really fun way. So, and I wanted to say that 
originally um, pubs were public houses where people would come and gather and conduct community legislation and share stories and, you know, those things. So I, I think that beer has always been um, part of, you know, the DNA of, of the society. So definitely agree with that. Yeah, I couldn't set it better yeah, myself. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, your flagship is an Amber Ale, is that right? Or do you have other flagships? Amber is our flagship. Okay. It's an alt style um, ale based upon a, a recipe that our co-founder Marcy Larson researched um, from the gold rush era, you know, and looked at bills of lading to see what, what malts were used to try to, to give a nod to the history, you know, of the state. Um, and it's, it's a differentiator for us. Yeah, um, definitely. There aren't a lot of amber ales um, that are there that have, been able to withstand, you know, the time and it's really a, a living legacy and a, and a bold way, you know, to be, to be different in that sea of IPAs. Definitely. I, I, I appreciate it. I agree. I definitely (laughs) appreciate it. Is that kind of just because of where you are? You think because like Alaska is Alaska just, they just love amber ales or. Well, I think, I mean, we're in 25 states. We're not, we're not as far east as you guys are right now. Um, but I, I think that, you know, amber ale definitely is balanced. It's refreshing. It doesn't overwhelm the palate. Um, it has those nice caramel malty notes without being too sweet. Um, it really is a, a unique beer that does stand the test of time in terms of um, what people are, are going to appreciate and enjoy. So um, it's not just in our in our home state in Alaska, um, just like you would see anywhere in, in what we call the lower 48. Um, we sell a, a bigger proportion of our beers are, are the heavier hopped um, lineup that we have yeah. um, compared to the, the other states combined. Um, but Amber will always be, you know, that flagship um, for us that then has um, some balance with with the sister products and the brother products and the and the cool cousins and nephews and nieces <laughs> that that we get to create. Right, so. right. So, what are these cool cousins, nephews, and nieces you're creating at the brewery? Oh my goodness, we have such a portfolio, Erica. You guys have to come up. If I could show you a visual, it would it would just it would just blow your mind in in terms of of all of the innovation um, awesome. that we have. So, um, we have a limited series that's a rotator series where we have a hazy lineup. So we had Hazy Bay, which is the the New England juicy style, um, and and we followed that up with Strawberry Haze, which is in the market right now that has. Um, fresh strawberries and then we're we're turning that into midnight haze um, which is uh, got a little bit of chocolate malt but still has that juicy um, fruitiness so um, those will start shipping you know here at the end of July and and into early August and and we do that transition so um, we just have the ability to you know use all of the ingredients that that are relevant um, in the market and and be able to pair that with something that is um, tr- true and tested like Alaskan Amber. Christy, is it weird for you to brew a hazy beer after probably <laughs> a number of years of you probably being told hazy beer? <laughs> it is, is beer. so weird. <laughs> I have to tell you, we made us we made an apricot milkshake IPA, oh, and I put oh my goodness. boots back on in the ten barrel system. <laughs> and you know, you're using this lauder ton and all of the process and procedures to get this beautiful clear wort was out the window. I'm like, yeah, I I guess we're not going to (laughs) boil off and clarify this protein out of the beer because I want it, you know, to the, go to the, to the brew kettle. So it, it definitely um, is a different take um, to be able to do that, but it's, it's fun. We've always appreciated, you know, those styles and, and learning from one another, I think when you get brewers together, we like to to share different processes, and um, and everybody makes better beer that way. Um, I was reading where farmers always share their techniques, and they're not secretive about them, and and that's better for everybody. I, I think that the same holds true, you know, for brewers. So it was it was great to get um, a group of women together, in particular, and be able to. 
um, just make that, you know, something that's different than what we've, we've made in the past. Absolutely. Well, you kind of flirted with what I was just going to yeah. about to ask you about community in Alaska, it being a bigger state. But before we get to that, we have to go to our sponsors. So take it away, Sound Guy Ryan. Did you know that your favorite Massachusetts breweries use hops from a local family-owned hop farm right here in Massachusetts? Our friends over at Four Star Farms are there for you whether you're a commercial brewery or a small batch home brewer. Make sure to head over to their website today and get your hands on some of the best and freshest hops available locally. Cheers! Cheers. At our local homebrew shop, Beer and Wine Hobby, you can get everything you need to make beer, wine, cider, cheese, and more. Not sure where to start? They have knowledgeable staff there to help. Beer and Wine Hobby is family-owned and located in Danvers, Massachusetts. Visit their website, beer-wine.com, and use our promo code BREWROOTS for 10% off your online order today. Shirts on Tap is the box subscription service for craft beer lovers. Each month, Shirts on Tap partners up with seven different breweries from across the country and collaborates on a sweet custom shirt design. We've been teamed up with Shirts on Tap since the inception of the podcast and are proud to announce a new promo code for all of our listeners. To get your first shirt for $5 off, go to the link in our description below and use the promo code. And remember, drink better beer, wear better shirts. And we're back. We're back. So, Christy, when we interviewed Maui, uh, Cam, our guest, was telling us they have to plan their brew days a couple weeks, a couple months in advance because it's a little bit difficult to get ingredients to their brewery because of them, you know. Being on an island and all being that. Being on an island. <laughs> now, you guys aren't on an island, but you mentioned it yourself, the lower 48. Um, how easy is it to get ingredients um, in can you locally source hops with the climate or and so on so so on and so forth? Yeah, we are too high in latitude to grow hops um, very well. So despite that um, Juno is not an island itself, there are no roads. We're off of the road system. Um, so we're effectively um, in that same type of situation that, you know, Garrett finds himself in, in Maui <laughs> Brewing. Yeah. Um, so everything is is barged in and out or air freighted. Uh, so it requires uh, a lot of careful planning and always some contingency um, because we can't just get something up here or get a truck. So delays, if, if something misses the barge, it's delayed a week. So that requires... Um, annual brew planning, then monthly brew planning, and then we a- adapt, you know, to what we have. And and if you know anything about the beer industry right now, the the forecast was a little bit all over the place, you know, <laughs> last year because yeah. of the change in in bars and restaurants having to open and shut down, and and the increases to to packaged products so it's definitely a constant focus and then we have to be just really innovative and creative to be able to adapt to all of those changing all those moving parts um, to be able to to make shipments and and get them where they need to go on time so supply chain is is a always a huge focus for us and we have great, great relationships with our partners, um, our vendor partners, and then our distributors um, that that really help with the communication so that we we don't have out of stocks and, and we make the beer that we need to make. I guess I didn't realize Juno was so closed off. Yeah. It's the capital, right? Or no? It is, it- is the capital, yes. That's yes. so funny. Wow. That's really cool. That's that, yeah. That's interesting. The unique thing about Alaska, it's so big, but population-wise, it's pretty rural. Per, yeah. Um, what's the craft beer community like? I mean, uh, how many breweries are in Alaska as a whole, and 
you know, we hear of stories of collaboration and people being low on grain. Uh, I, you said that Juno's landlocked. I'm sure there's, unless there's another brewery in Juno, you know, or a couple of breweries, you know, how do you guys collaborate and, you know, share best practices or grain? There's a lot there. <laughs> we, yeah, make sure I don't, I don't not answer your question. <laughs> yeah. So, so t- you know, if I missed one of those, but we'll come I, back. I, yeah. say, <laughs> I think, I think there's around 40 breweries. I could be a little wrong on that. So you may want to fact check me um, on that. So in terms of as big of a state um, that we have, we may not have as many breweries as, as many other states, but it's growing, which is great because the more breweries that we have um, just the more, variety to the consumer it brings new friends to to craft beer it it really helps the the state to have good beer we have three breweries now in in juno and we do help each other um we have shared cans and and um hops and and different different items that we have um, and we have a, a very friendly uh, relationship um, with with the other brewers in the state and um, we did just do a collaboration that I mentioned for Pink Boots um, uh, Sarah Perez from Bleeding Heart came down um, and Hannah from Hoodoo um, and Sarah went across the state and did I think 11 different she did a brews. bunch I follow her on um, Instagram and she was all over the place yeah, she yeah. is really, uh, you know, connecting us with one another. And it is a big state to be able to connect. So it takes intentional <laughs> effort to be yeah. able to to come and to visit one another. But we do gather for um, the Brewers Association. Uh, we do have opportunities. We usually kind of have a hub in Anchorage where where we connect with one another. But I, I think it's harder a little bit with the distance um, and it's definitely harder, you know, in the face of, of everything that happened in 2020. Um, but I think that that's growing and it's getting better. Um, and that's just more opportunity for us uh, to have good beer in the state of Alaska to be able to share with the rest of the country. Definitely. What is the closest brewery to you guys? Are you kind of like by yourself out there or? We're probably a little equidistant between, um, so we are in Lemon Creek, um, which is kind of centrally located in Juneau, and that's where our brewery is. And then downtown, um, there's a a brewery called Devil's Club um, and one called Barnaby. So I guess there's four. That was my bad in in Juneau. (laughs) And then Forbidden Peak is um, just, you know, northwest of us in uh, Ock Bay. Um, so very different focuses, uh, different types of beers. Um, they're all more of a pub uh, kind of a, a setup. Um, we're more of the supplier and and we don't have um, on premise you know facilities. We have a tasting room, um, but we focus on our retailers and and distributors. So it's a, a little bit of a, of a different makeup, but we have former brewers at those facilities and, and very positive friendships and, and relationships. Hmm. That's cool. So you can have tasting rooms in Alaska. There's no rules against that or anything. There are lots oh. of rules. For, <laughs> you know, in alcohol laws are depend on each state. Yeah. And there's there's a, a lot of, you know, we really have never wanted to negatively impact our retailers. Um, so we have, you know, intentionally made sure that we have our beers available at a tasting room, but it truly um, is a, a tasting room. Yeah. Yeah. So with Alaska being, kind of, you know, Juno kind of being, you know, the capital, uh, what is the, What's Juno known for? Like, what's the scene like? Um, correct me if I'm wrong. There's a military base that's near Juno, or is that an Anchorage? That is an Anchorage. It is. Okay. Yeah. My apologies. Um, so, what are the what's the local you know scene like? Are people drinking the haze craft? Craze you know, is, is it a haze craze yeah. there, or are people <laughs> still drinking the macro? You know, the light lagers, um, so on and so forth. That's a good question. Um, it's I would say that it's a really diverse community um, in Juneau. So we have a real benefit um, being 
with the history of the company for 35 years. So you'll see all of our brands that are showcased. So you all may be familiar with um, Amber, um, but we have Alaskan Amber, we have a Husky Mosaic IPA, we have a Kolsch, we have an Icy Bay IPA. Um, we just have white ale that, that you know, we've mm. had for a number of years. So if you came to um, a bar or a liquor store here in Juneau, which I hope that you will, you know, you're going to see us have three or four tap handles and you're going to see us um, have just a lot of offerings um, that are in those sets. So we have that variety um, to, to showcase uh, here locally. Um, but I would say that it's it's similar to what's happening in, in the lower 48. And there's um, hazies are definitely experiencing um, an uptick that is in a, that is not a fat. We think that that is here to stay. Um, and then our IPAs um, do really well. And of course, people go back to Amber, you know, so when you go to a gathering, um, you tend to see Amber that is present um, alongside those, those other packages. So we have variety packs so that people can have a, a party pack and, and be able to share those. Uh, but we're known for being the capital. So the state of Alaska presence um, is, is a big presence in our, our kind of smaller community. Hmm. I love that you have a variety pack. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I think more breweries need to do that. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Yeah. All right. So I'm curious what our listeners and us included can look forward to if we make our way out to Alaska. Yeah. But before we do so, a word from our sponsors. Are you a solo artist, band, podcaster, or anyone else who needs recording services? Well, we got a place for you where your vision can become a reality. Welcome to Small Pond Studios, built by hand with heart and sweat equity by musicians for musicians. Go to smallpondstudios.io to reach out to get more information. And make sure you let them know that Brood sent you. Hey, Sound Guy Ryan here. Didn't know if you heard, but we're a part of the Hopped Up Network. There you'll find other informative podcasts about beer. So go ahead, follow them on social media, and visit them on their website, hoppedupnetwork.com, to learn more about the people, beer, and breweries from around the country. And until next time, thanks for listening. Cheers. I love it when we come back from a sponsor break because... Because we're back? Well, no, I just, <laughs> I like this portion because I like to travel. I was just in Philly a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. I got a ton of Brewers listeners to tell us where to go and not one recommendation fails me. Ever. So, <laughs> Christy, don't let me down. Don't let us down. Don't let the listeners down. <laughs> uh, you're local there. So what's, you know, what are things that people should do if they make it to Juno? I am a local and I could show you a great time, anybody that, that Noted. comes up. Um, but <laughs> I would say, please come and visit us at our tasting room because we have crew brews that are one barrel brews that everybody from our whole organization participates in, whether oh, they're awesome. in brewing or finance cool. or packaging or marketing. So you're not going to get those anywhere else. And that gives us, you know, feedback um, on, on what, you know, you like to, to taste and those products graduate. So it's a really cool way um, to try something that's really unique. Um, but we really showcase the outdoors um, like no other other place. So you can rent kayaks, there's fishing charters um, that I absolutely recommend getting out and, and getting out on, on a boat. We have a trail system. We have more miles of trails than roads. It's extraordinary. <laughs> oh there God. are nonprofit organizations and the city and borough of Juneau that maintains the trail system. Um, there are forest service cabins. There are um, state cabins. Um, there's beaches. There's just, you know, you go go to your your grocery store or your liquor store, um, get your your provisions and your beer and and put them in your backpack and and 
and get those shoes muddy, <laughs> get those hiking boots all, all muddy is, is what I would recommend. But we have a, a great, um, a great chamber of commerce um, and a great travel um, traveling places that, that can get you where you want to go. Helicopter rides, you can walk on nice. a glacier, um, <laughs> anything, anything that your, your adventurous spirit, you know, we, we definitely have it in a small geographical area. You can be on a glacier and then be on the beach later in the same day. So you guys go swimming? You have, you have beaches? They go swimming in? We well, if you have there, there is a little <laughs> bit of surfing. Okay, um, okay. And then yeah. there, you know, we have we have lakes that there's gotcha. water skiing and and things like that on. Um, and I I know people very well who do open water swimming. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's an adventure. Yeah, so. for sure. I just kind of figured it was like just always cold, cold. and snowy yeah. there. Yeah. It is cold. I mean, the the water temperature in the, I mean, you're in the channel, you're in the ocean, so it's, it's got to be around 48 degrees. Oh, my Lord. Know, oh, it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Nice and refreshing. Join, join the polar bear club yeah. you know, when you're up here. Nice, nice. And then, just because now oh, I'm I, thinking about this, so, like, is it dark there for, like, half the year, right? The sun? We don't have as as large of a of a change as you would as you go up to you know Fairbanks and okay. Barrow and Nome and those places where they have the last sunset and the last sunrise for the season. Um, but we do experience um, there's a big tidal um, change that occurs. Um, so tide pooling is also a really fun thing to do. Ooh. I think we get down to somewhere in the maybe four hour time range. So on the summer solstice, you know, which is coming up, um, you might have, you know, three or four hours of, of darkness. So everybody That's, just plays softball until so after cool. midnight and gets up early. Um, and then, you know, we have the flip side of that, of course, you know, in the winter time yeah. where, you know, it's dark when you go to work and it's dark when you come home. Um, so you still get out doors during that time the snow is very reflective yeah. the stars are very bright you get a headlamp and you go cross-country skiing and that's and cool you, you get outside and and that helps through through that time period yeah that's just amazing yeah i'm we need to go yeah it's just it's just Especially the summer solstice coming i think yeah. that's what we gotta do so christy you mentioned beautiful landscapes and trails and so on and so forth it's very clear that Recycling, being eco-friendly is important in Alaska. And rumor has it, Alaskan Brewing Company has quite an initiative for being eco-friendly and recycling and, and water waste, so on and so forth. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, I think being um, thoughtful about being a good, you know, community brewery um, has always been part of our DNA. Uh, so we were the first brewery to have a CO2 collection system and that captures the, the carbonation that's produced from fermentation and we're able to use that back um, into the beer that reduces the, the CO2 emissions. We have a spent grain dryer and, and boiler that we use for fuel. Um, we do not so have cool. cows and, you know, cattle is, is not a thing <laughs> that we have. Thing. So other, right. <laughs> other brewers are able to go and, and, and have their spent grain utilized um, by livestock. We don't have that. So we use it um, for fuel and we are, we have a mash filter press, um, which also uh, helps with that. So we've always been conscious um, about our impact to the community and, and really living in harmony uh, with the community is, is just the way forward for, for everyone. So we're always looking at new opportunities. We've had Coastal Code, which is a ocean and water cleanup um, for many years um, that we've participated in. So that's just, that's just how we have always lived and, awesome. and worked. Yeah. And I think you guys use a lot of local ingredients as well. You really promote Alaska more than just the community, but like, you know, agriculturally, I guess. We do. We just harvested the, the spruce tips are being harvested right now um, in, in Gustavus and Glacier Bay. And so nice. um, our, 
our brewing and packaging manager was just over there and and overseeing you know some of that and it's it's just a, a beautiful way it's it's healthy for the trees it's a fantastic ingredient um, that is showcased in in many of our beers and and has been um, since winter ale was launched I know it's one of Ryan's favorites. Here's <laughs> Tiff. He's giving us the thumbs it's, up. After. I love it too. I mean, I feel like it's really um, delicate. Like too much is too, it's, oh wow, it's real it strong, a fine right? Line. It's a fine yeah, line. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's really fun. Yeah. I, I do really like it. Yeah. And it's not something that we get often out here. True. You know, it's something very one off that we get. So yeah. it's always a treat when we do get one. Yeah. I think a lot of people would perceive they would expect it to be piney mm. um, and it's not. It has a nice estuary. Um, it has good, rich in vitamin C um, as well. And it mm. can be um, almost on the bubble gummy, you know, kind of, kind of end. And when it's too strong to me, it tastes like cucumbers and smells like oh, um, cucumbers. So <laughs> that's, um, that's kind of the, the edge that, that you want to, to live on. Mm. So I, we always like to ask people, it's, it's interesting to get geographically this question, but what are you frustrated with in the brewing com community as it stands today? Oh, gosh, that's a good question. Um, I think that um, we talked a little bit earlier that um, the laws are really complicated um, around alcohol throughout, you know, federally and then in each state that we're in. And I think that um, it's just challenging to navigate that, you know, sometimes. Um, and there is a lot that's left to interpretation. So sometimes you'll get one answer from um, one person and then a new answer from another. So I, I think just with all of the change that we've had, the new variety that consumers want, the the difficulty with um, supply chain, um, aluminum cans and malt availability and all yeah. of those things. And then to have complications, you know, navigating um, different regulations is difficult for, for small businesses. So I would say that I wish that that was simpler and I wish that it was easier. So we understand the the reasons, you know, for everything and the spirit of of anything that's in that's legal and and regulatory, um, but it sure is a challenge, you know, when you're a small business to keep up with all of it and to even interpret it sometimes. Mm. So seriously, more time, <laughs> more time, you know, working on on new new beers and and sharing them um, would be preferred to <laughs> trying to interpret. Um, things that are difficult to interpret. So. For sure. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> Great answer. Uh, I am always curious. What's the uh, what's your favorite hop? <laughs> oh, that's a hard one. Um, you know, we have saws hops that are mm. that are in our amber. And I, I still love the saws hop, but I, I like Citra. Um, I love the five eighty six and Idaho seven. Um, I, I tend to like those those um, citrusy. Um, hops. Uh, there, there. I don't think there's a hop that I don't like. It just might need to be in balance, yeah. you know, with with some others. If they get a little too sulfury or a little too catty, then um, they just need a, a partner to to complement and and to to make that you know something that that I would want to drink. But I I never will turn down a hoppy beer. Nice. And along those lines, not a problem for me. <laughs> <laughs> along those lines, do you have a? Is there a specific, I don't know, ingredient in beer that you think is the most important? Yeast, water, malt, hops. Oh well, they're all important. Yeah. I mean, the water that we have is, I think, you know, a, a differentiator in terms of just how pure it is and um, the the ability for us to to handle, you know, all of those styles. Um, so water is, is, you know, the primary ingredient. So I, yeah. I would have to, I would have to lean, um, on that, but I, I think those are the, those are the things that, that make, you know, that make the beer. That's like, they're saying, all important, right? <laughs> you need yeah. them all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, being in the industry for as long as you've been in the industry, has there been a, a, 
I hate the word trend, but a trend in beer that you've seen that you were surprised didn't take off? Um, or what was a trend that you were surprised took off? <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised by the hard sodas a little bit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Mm. Like, I don't Mike, know. If, uh, not, I don't not know your if fathers. You would yeah. Count that. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you would count that as a as a beer yeah. trend. Yeah, definitely. Um, like hard seltzers, hard sodas. It's all kind of the same thing. Yeah, I think that uh, I think you always have those low alcohol, really low. I guess that's probably it. We had some, you know, two percent alcohol um, beers. Then I've had some that were really, really good. Uh, and I'm surprised that there aren't more of those actually around um, here. We're I feel like that's growing. We're seeing them. Yeah. yeah. Luckily, I mean, we're seeing a lot of low ABV lagers, low ABV pilsners. So people keep talking. It's um, it's like a brewer's trend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The brewers are finally trying to push the things that they want to drink. Um, so we're, we're seeing them grow. I think yeah. around here, anyways. Uh, we kind of flirted with it, but seltzers. Uh, do you guys brew a hard seltzer? What's your opinion on hard seltzers? Do you drink them? We do make hard seltzer, right. and we have spruce chips in our. Get up! Yes. Really? That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so you gotta you gotta come up and and try some of those as well. Yeah, we really wanted to uh, make something that we were proud of um, in the in the seltzer realm, and and give something to that growing audience that um, continues, you know, to, to flourish right now. So I'm, I'm very proud of, of the seltzers that we've produced and we continue to innovate in that space. That is a really fun place um, to be able to, to innovate, but to make something that um, is really true to the brewing process, um, the fermentation process, the fermentation process of that was, was really a great challenge for us because we do make that um, from, you know, brew kettle um, forward. So Mm -hmm. that's cool. If I was to tell you when you first started at Alaskan Brewery in 2021, you would be brewing a seltzer. You'd be brewing (laughs) hazy IPAs, cloudy IPAs, uh, milkshake, beer with lactose. Uh, What would you have said to me back then? I would not have believed the seltzer. (laughs) Really? Yeah. Um, the rest of it, I think I could have I wrapped my head around because you, you've got to remember that I was a brewer on the 10 barrel system and we were trying all kinds of crazy small stuff. things. And we <laughs> did, um, you know, lactose stouts and, you know, milk stouts. So a, a milkshake IPA isn't too much of a, of a stretch from that. I, I don't I wouldn't have I wouldn't have foreseen um, the rise of, of seltzers at, at that time. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. When did you kind I of. I would have thought more barrel aging and bottle conditioning, <laughs> yeah. probably. Yep. So you think seltzers are here to stay? I do think seltzers are here mm-hmm. to stay. I think that the trends are going to always be toward um, just drinkability and, and lower carbohydrates. And, and again, the, the lower alcohol, you're always going to have. Um, the need for something that's big and malt forward and and maybe higher in alcohol. Um, but as you know, as we we age and and <laughs> and we you know wanna wanna be on the boat and we want to be in in hot places, um, there's gonna be a, a trend for something that's that's lighter. but I what's great is that we can produce all of those things, you know, so we have barrel aged smoke Porter. We have our, um, perseverance ale that's coming out, um, for our 35th anniversary. And that is a big Russian Imperial stout. Um, so it's a both and conversation, uh, and we want to be able to have products that we're really proud of to put the Alaskan name on, um, to meet the that variety for all of our friends that we have out there in the market. Yeah, I would say variety is right. You have something for everyone. Yeah, and that's great. Yeah, I love it. Speaking about for everyone, uh, you guys have not made it to the East Coast. Uh, is that in the plan <laughs> for the future? You know, we have looked at it. That it just gets to be uh, challenging to ship that far, and then um, you start to look at the impacts of of a carbon footprint, um, on that. So I I think we will always continue, 
um, to look at that and, and see how it makes sense and, and how we can participate. Um, and then in the meantime, we just enjoy the products that you guys already have yeah. over there and, and hope to be um, side by side, you know, at some point. Yeah, that's great. Cool. So I'm all good with questions. Ryan, do you got a question for Christy? Yeah, I want to know, what do you want to learn more about? Oh, gosh. That's <laughs> every, a big question, Every right? single time, <laughs> Ryan. You, you drop the bombs like that every single time. I'm a lifelong learner. I, I consider myself a lifelong student. So I always want to know more about people. I always want to know about places and and I love stories so I am always watching a documentary where it's 30 for 30 and ESPN or or, or something I just want to know about people's stories and and learn from that and incorporate it and into everything that I do nice love it thank you for sharing your story and kind of the story of Alaskan brewing today this will be the uh christy 30 for 30 yeah this is <laughs> <laughs> uh we want our listeners uh our goal is to get our listeners excited about the beer that you guys yeah. are, are, are pumping out and we want people you know covid is kind of easing it's time uh, to take a vacation to juno and yeah so if you are making <laughs> your way out to alaska yeah. in the next couple of weeks months so on and so forth um where can we find you guys physically in Juneau, Alaska, we are at 5429 Sean Drive. That is where the brewery is located. And then we have a wonderful tasting room um, that's on Commercial Drive just behind the brewery. Um, and we will show you a great time. <laughs> and if you come to Juno, you will find our products um, in all the grocery stores and all the liquor stores. We have a retail shop in downtown Juno called The Depot that has the best swag that you can the wear home swag. proudly. <laughs> um, and we have an online store for that as well. So mm-hmm. just come see us and we promise to show you what it's like to live life Alaskan. Yeah. I love it. And for our listeners that are dispersed throughout the lower 48, do you guys have a beer finder on your website so they can find beer in their local market? Absolutely. Yes. If you go to alaskanbeer.com, there is a beer finder um, at the bottom of the page. You can link the product that you want to see, or you can select all products. You enter your zip code and you'll be able to find us. Woo-hoo. We might have to make a road trip somewhere where we can get your beer before yeah. we can go to <laughs> just enjoy some of the beer. Yes. Uh, so also we'll link the social media in our doobly do below. As um, always. And Christy, thank you for doing this today. But thank you for having us. One last question. You go, yeah. Uh, we always like to end our episodes with what are you most proud of? What are are we most proud of? I, I or think you. Or you. Are you. Yeah. What, what are, are you, you most proud, proud of? <laughs> I I Sorry. think the the people that we have, the crew that we have, we call them the brew crew um, at Alaskan Brewing Company. The the tenacity and the effort um, that our team has shown over the last year is just so inspiring um, to be able to produce new products. Um, with smiles on our faces, um, below the masks, <laughs> and and to be able to be in community and keep each other safe um, and be thoughtful during that has it's just I, I could not be more proud of of the team that we have in Juno. It's it's fantastic. Yeah, I love it. Wow, I'm sold. Yeah. Yep. All right, Ryan, <laughs> book the plane ticket. We're, We're tickets. going. <laughs> so uh, thank you again, Christy. Thank and you. we hope to see you in person soon. Yeah. Absolutely. You're always welcome. But please don't don't hesitate. But we'll, we will get you some beer in the meantime. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. You'll see an email from us in a couple Sounds months, good. I hope. And we'll be out there. So cheers. 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 Take care. Take care. All right, everyone. We are here at Ryan's favorite part. He actually admitted to us off air. That he actually loves it. He loves it. He actually thinks that we are the most organized at the outro. And it's like so much fun. Yeah. Uh, So who did we interview for our next week's guest? Ben Water. Out of Lynn, Massachusetts. Two-time guest. Two-time. Well, some of them. Some of them. Some of them was the first time. We interviewed three people. We did. It was crazy. 
and we're talking about their new rotating IPA series and just kind of what has changed at uh, Mentwater. So when we originally talked with them, they were only brewing in one location. Yeah, it's been what two, three, two years or three years yeah. since we last interviewed them. So it was pretty cool just to catch up, and you know they've grown a lot. Yeah, so it's it was really cool. They're they're dabbling into. Yeah, that lager was really good. Um, yeah. We got a crawler <laughs> of um, the lager, and I've been using that that crawler that they, that it's that a growler really nice crawler. For uh, yeah. I don't even drink I, I don't even drink uh, coffee. My mm. girlfriend drinks coffee. We've been using that vessel as like a cold. Oh, coffee. that's a great idea. Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, it's and when I clean it, I did refill it with beer. Mm. You couldn't tell that it was coffee in it because it's stainless steel. Yeah. So there you go. Worked out really good. Cool. So, if you want to hear more about my coffee escapades, <laughs> uh, follow me on Instagram. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> tune in next week for our episode with Ben Water. Cheers. Cheers.